Hello. We made it now. <laughs> we are. We have we have entered the the cyber stream. We were lost for a minute there. Yeah. Thank you, Gary. Glad yeah. to be here. Well, welcome. I'm excited to to overdose and chill with you. Uh, for the world out there looking, we've got Michael Gilliatt here, who is a creative director with Trusted Media Brands. Um, and we are going to talk about one of the more interesting digital stories out there. So to kick us off, tell us, you know, tell us a little bit about um, your company and what you what you do. And then we'll backtrack to say, how did you get here in the first place? Perfect. Yeah. Over. Yeah. A lot of people don't know and trusted media brands doesn't hit them. And then you start talking about our brands and then they're like, oh, aha. Uh -huh, yep. My parents know that. I know that I visited that. Um Trusted Media Brands is kind of the parent name for our, our seven brands. Um, our main three that everybody knows is Taste of Home, Reader's Digest, and Family Handyman. Those are our kind of main pillars, I would say. Um, but then we have seven all together um, in the enthusiast space, which are Birds and Blooms, Family Handyman, um, Country, Reminisce. So we really kind of cater to kind of the Midwest in that aspect on those enthusiast brands. But um, obviously, Reader's Digest and Taste of Home are known throughout the world. Yeah. I mean, look, I grew up near your headquarters and sort of always knew about Reader's Digest like the rest of America. Um, but it wasn't until starting to work with you guys that I realized sort of what a behemoth you still are and what the digital transformation you guys have gone through over the last, you know, several years. So before we get into that and um, learn about some of the cool things you guys are doing and where you've been right in the middle of all of it, tell us how you got here today. How do you end up sitting in this seat as a great Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Probably an unorthodox way of getting it and just probably luck a little bit as well as always dabbled in there and trying to do the next big thing and thinking about where my career path should go. Um, but, um, you know, started off originally and, you know, after graduation and ad sales. Um, so worked at an agency, but was kind of selling. I always thought I would go into sports marketing, to be honest. Um, and that was kind of my focus in, in college. Um, and then saw kind of, I'm a big Marquette fan and, I saw I was working late there one let one night with the um, with the team and I was hoping that they would miss a shot because it was already in double overtime and I knew that I had two more hours worth of work yeah. and so I thought that wasn't my career path and then um, stumbled right into um, literally the day that I got um, I interviewed some months back and became a creative director then so I've been slowly crawling back up. Um, for a really small credit union that I'm now on the board of. Um, and so I got kind of passionate with um, Brewery Credit Union in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Obviously, there's a drinking theme there um, that we can dive into further conversations on. But see the, see the uh, yeah, the bar, bar cards we yeah. both have in our background. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Can't, can't have beer without um, being in Milwaukee. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So then my kind of career path became financials and really wanting to dive into digital design. So um, I, I left the credit union that I was in just because of our scale and size of scope on projects and worked for a company um, on my first system, uh, Sitefinity. I don't know if you even heard of that. Sure. Yeah. Um, kind of in the dot net space and did front end design. Like at that time, responsive design was just kind of starting off. Um, so I was really designing and, you know, really loved and was passionate and kind of front end coding. Um, and that brought me to um, kind of doing some specialized um, for a company FIS that powers the back end of people's programs and systems. And so did um, presentations and kind of corporate digital packages for Bank of China, Bank of America, some top clients. Um, and those were the type of projects where you you have really nice budgets and timelines and you spend kind of, you know, um, three months worth of work and decision makers to then have it cut <laughs> and end up not actually being produced. So I wanted to go um, kind of in a career path that um, Trusted Media Brands was starting to look in at building up their digital side, right? Um, when, you, when you think about 
our brands, Reader's Digest and Taste of Home, it's all user submitted content, right? UGC before the internet was UGC and everybody's so focused on it. And I think that's where they realized that they kind of lost that, like the brands aren't associated with that and we're getting and doing more effort to connect that way digitally um, with our customers. So you you made the leap over to, to trusted media brands. You did so in a design function. Yes. But you would have this sort of front end developer experience um, and a little bit of understanding of how the sort of, um, you know, how the digital sausage gets made from your sort of ad revenue, your ad sales days. Exactly. Yeah. And that's um, what was exciting is we're so data driven here um, that the size and volume, like last year, I just talked with our data analytics before this, and we did 3 billion emails that we sent out for consumer marketing. Wow. Um, so I manage a team of digital designers and print designers, had no print background. And that, that was kind of getting into the sausage of, you know, direct mail. Right. And that's the core of our business still is direct mail packages and people sending in checks, right? Checks through the mail. Yeah. Um, and so then let's, let's just pause there. And I want to make sure that everybody understands what you just said. Yeah. And by the way, please ask questions if you have them. Yeah. So, you know, your company, which I, I read before this, that actually one in four adults is getting hit with your digital products right now. Yes. And somehow one out of three of those. Um, that audience is a millennial. So somehow from the old Reader's Digest days to today, you guys have figured out a digital transformation. It's working. It's targeting even younger people. And, but it's still driven. The business is still driven by direct. Direct mail. Yeah. Direct mail. Yeah. That's our, still our core. Uh, it's still kind of keeping the lights on and, and really giving, you know, the, the example that I like to use is setting the runway, right? So it's setting us a path to experiment in digital, connect with our customers, right? Um, and I think, you know, the, the biggest thing that we tap into on in our company and what we're trying to do more digitally and, and have that conversation is nostalgia, right? Is especially in this time of COVID that we're all sitting at home and there's so much chaos in our lives. People like just a distraction, right? And, and to take their mind off and to grasp something that reminds them of their childhood, of a time that when we all reflect back, right? And <laughs> those mental models, everything always looks better, <laughs> especially 2018 and 2019. No matter how your year went, looks better than 2020 for most people in America yeah. um, or in the world, right? And and that's and that's what we're that's what a lot of our brands do for people is is connect them in because people are sharing stories. Um, we have just great stories that people connect with people um, like Reader's Digest, for example. We have so many people that write in that like that's how they learned English. Right. These mm. short, simple stories. Um, and we're just trying to figure out, OK, grabbing that copy and sitting, you know, in there in wherever in life just brought some peace to people. And we're just trying to figure out how to do that better in the digital age. We're having a lot of page views um, on Family Handyman right now because yeah. people are doing home projects, right? And looking for yeah. that. Um, that is one of our big, you know, since, you know, the that's our biggest area that's having a lot of COVID bump right now. So I'm, I'm curious about that. So you've got this, so there's this business where you're, you're sending out mailers, people are signing up for physical magazines. And over the years, you've, you've learned how to build tons of traffic to these multiple brands. So you've got 12 million monthly sessions, 8 million monthly sessions, 6 million monthly sessions for these different brands, like big websites. And and you've got this legacy of being the kind of OGs of UGC, if you will. Okay. You've got this in your DNA. And take us to sort of how does commerce get involved? Talk to us about some of the sites that we're working on, right? Yep. And and And... And maybe also if I could ask you to sprinkle in, what else are you seeing change during COVID? Yep. Um, so yeah, give us a little color there. Yeah, so on my, my area is kind of the consumer marketing. So subscribing to the magazine and to, um, and to our book program. So just like the magazine where a subscription, one of our biggest programs is, for net revenue is our book programs, which is 
same same idea of a subscription service on but with instead of magazines as books um our taste of home brand of people wanting slow cookers and and stuff of new ways to experiment in their homes now that they're cooking more than going out um we're seeing an insurgence of that um so really what i've been spending the last two years on is focusing on our magazine acquisition so we have these digital landing pages and my philosophy there and team's philosophy is make it similar to that direct mail experience and i think that's where most if we if we build these new worlds and new environments i think that's the quickest way in my opinion for things to fail right we, we need to do lookalike models of our current audience and just take the age down, right? It's like the, you know, Apple with the iPhone, right? It, that's always a common example out there is that's, that design, let people understood of those icons and that way of how to move to a new digital experience. And for a lot of our customer base, core customer base, it's their first time doing online purchases. Um, they, again, we're, we have a sizable amount that still prefers that and doesn't trust digital transactions. Now with COVID, they are, and that's where on our e-commerce site, we're really seeing some positive gains. Um, we're seeing now that, you know, essentially people are forced into making these digital purchases. And the more that we can streamline those purchase funnels it is in our advantage. We're selling a product that our average price is somewhere in the range of $8 to $15 for our starting subscriptions because we do subscription basis. So we try to step people up in the cycle. Yep. And because of that cycle, um, we try to have a low entry bar barrier to get in, right? Price matters very much to our core demographic across all brands. And so where we try to look for the biggest impact is try to, right, when you were at the grocery store, right, and it's an impulse purchase. You're not even thinking about it. You just grab it and you put it in your cart. Yep. That's what we try are trying to replicate as quickly as possible on digital, right? How quickly can we? So everybody talks about page speed, but it's checkout speed. You know, that's more important to us than page speed at this moment in time. Yeah, I think that's, you know, and I know because we've worked through some uh, conversion rate optimization audits together yes. that there's that there's that balance when you're when you're coming from a, a culture of content, which you guys are, and you're trying to introduce this digital commerce experience. You have to balance that smooth checkout with informing them enough about why they're even here. Yeah. Right. And so can you talk a little bit about um what it's meant within trusted media brands to to try and elevate that digital commerce, that direct to consumer behavior, um, when you have these large media sites that have the twelve million views, and then the the e commerce site, you know, with these products, talk about the the work you have to do to sort of balance the content and commerce. Yeah, um, and truthfully, like we're we're diving into that. That I mean, that is we we literally just kind of put our toe in the water last year on the e-commerce side. And we're kind of all hands on deck of growing this ship and, and what's out there. Um, and so we, we heavily invest on the media side, right? Of we have digital editors and, and are building trust with their audience in that way. And the handoff, like we rely significantly on programmatic ads in that space. Um, and, and that's where, and partnerships like MSN that we have of recirculate circulation there, um, and advertising dollars and, and, and with our trusted media studio, um, that we've, we've talked about before. Um, yeah, hey, actually, it would be great if you could talk a little bit about what that studio is and, 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 and what the capabilities of it are. I think it's amazing to realize all the things that you have under this roof. Uh, so yeah, tell us about that a little bit. Yeah, Trusted Media's brand studios is great. Like, um, so it's our kind of, so we have kind of three divisions. It's digital, um, which manages the, the domains. We have the consumer marketing, which is managing the products. And then we have the ad sales, which is managing the Trusted Media's uh, studios. And the studios are great that 
um, they're really trying to tailor our content with advertisers, right? And put this together with our audience. We have, you know, again, a sizable audience, but then we also have really special moments, right? With the content and the SEO work that we do of tailoring products and experiences. So one of our biggest um, ones that I was part of um, just recently that we launched was the bakeable. So we're trying to make these communities. So on Taste of Home, we have the bakeable community. We have already organic people with on Facebook and um, and Pinterest that were taking a lot of our recipes mm. and they were literally making, we were finding out that they were making breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Huh. They were cooking that much in their house, our recipes. Like we're like, who has time for taking, and this was before COVID, right? Yeah. And now so many of us now are at home making breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> um, and so we saw that as like, let's start building these communities and let's tie brands and, and help them put products with that, right? Um, because we're not gonna go out and, and we don't wanna make all individual products. We just want to build communities that are passionate and as loyal as the content that we're creating. Yeah. So our um, advertisers are coming to you and saying, look, I need a video that showcases this product or this, and then you're, you're co-producing these things and, and, and having some native sort of advertising on your sites. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We're co-producing videos um, together. So um, a lot in that, um, a lot in that cooking space. So um, we have these kind of 30 second videos, right. Of how to prepare meals yeah. um, so that we can tie sponsorship and then give them product. Um, we've also had partnerships in the past with other companies that are, you know, that they sell products that need recipes. Um, so we put those together and bundle them together so that they can not only with their product um, sell that, but it, it will come with recipes of how to use that product, right? Um, it's tailing our content that we've already been good at because all of our recipes are test kitchen here in Milwaukee. Um, it's still going on in COVID, which it's amazing how everybody is able to adjust and adapt in this tradition right there in this condition right now. Um, but they produce this content that is is hits with the advertisers and the audience, which is kind of special. Yeah. Um, sorry, just give me. Sorry about that. Uh, it looks like we've got some some comments coming in here. Uh, and uh, let's see what's one here from Jason. Um, Most e-commerce websites struggle with content. Trusted media brands has this as an advantage. Any plans to introduce an affiliate model? And we have an affiliate kind of area that's growing. Um, we match that up with um, um, a handful. Um, where we're seeing the biggest takeoff is Family Handyman on that angle, um, especially because of the high price points with those items of um, family. We have gift guides, right, that tie into that, um, as well as we kind of, we just launched on the e-commerce site that we work with Overdose on um, our partner with partnership with Range Clean for Taste of Home branded um, cookware. So you can, we are having inventory issues. I think like a lot of people where we're selling <laughs> way more than what we expected, yeah. um, but it is uh, something that is is um, really tied because our brand is so trusted with home cooks across the world. Yeah, awesome. Sounds like uh, you're 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 on it, and uh, you just need to make more. You just need to make more products. Yeah, no, and that's where we're diving in. Like I said, last year was just getting the footwork of our e-commerce set so that we can grow into these. We are very much looking at the data of we are in the process of making a data lake right now, so yeah. that we know the value of our e-commerce or our our media sites down to the pixel. And we're really trying to be pixel focused now on that. Um, meaning just like retailer know their square footage, right? And so we have all these fighting groups, affiliates just mentioned, marketing with uh, promotions for book and magazine subs. We need to get better at one-on-one -on -one conversations so that we're not bombarding, right? That 
that that email right of 3.3 billion emails sent out last year we we need to get better and where we're trying to do is we have the trust and the attention of our audience we just don't want to mistrust it now and we're trying to get better at optimizing that yeah I, i've been sort of uh as we've been working together and working through your different brands you know and one of the things that i know you know, it was a big part. It was a big part of your company's transition from the sort of old school media company to a digital, digitally native company was to start to get all of your data and your platforms on a single platform, and to start to consolidate a lot of the 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 back end tech. Yeah. So now, like when I go to Taste of Home or I go to Reader's Digest or Family Handyman, you're for, you're working off a common template. You've got a similar back end. Um, and the same thing is happening on the Shopify on the commerce side. Um, and it's clear that now you have this opportunity to scale this. You have the native proven ability to build communities. Um, and I, I'm actually curious, maybe you could talk for a minute about the healthy. I don't know. I was I was looking at the healthy and um, I saw that, that was a fairly new creation that already has millions of, of views coming yep. So yeah, we saw Reader's Digest, one of their kind of pillars. So we've been trying to do this of, you know, kind of having content pillars, right? What's working for newsstand and attracting people. And Reader's Digest had all this healthy content, right? So um, 10 signs your uh, need to see a doctor or um, common ways to best practices of household ingredients to clear, uh, help a common cold, right? So we had all this content uh, around the health and it was a perfect alignment with those sponsors, our trusted studios that we felt like we had to, that this was a sizable group now that we could spin this off into its own site. So um, kind of like your sitcom spinoffs, um, the healthy is a spinoff of that audience of RD because we thought that it was growing so big that it was taken away from RD of like Andrew with the RD jokes. That is a core part of that and those community stories. So we felt like that was the community stories and the jokes were kind of conflicting, right? With the, um, with the health information and the medical. So we've yeah. invested in that in the last year and a half, roughly now, where we have all those articles are vetted um, through with um, medical experts that we've partnered with so that we can really be a trusted source because you don't really, you don't really want to go from finding out like, getting some medical advice to then also having a couple um, jokes <laughs> right after it. Well, I mean, you don't want that from a readership's perspective and Google doesn't want that, you know, oh, yeah. from an organic page rank perspective, um, which is what I think is so interesting about the opportunity that you guys have is you sort of generate these audiences and you can spin them out into these more sort of, you know, into their little pillar um, and, you know, create these, these companies or these brands. Yeah. Um, so it's, uh, you guys are really well positioned to sort of build on your, your core talents, um, of doing this at scale. Yeah. I mean, and that's what kind of honestly attracted me to the company, right. Is that when you really look at the numbers, the size of the audience and, and where the essential core pillars are. There is still so many more easy wins for us in the digital. <laughs> and it's also the maddening thing now that I've been here for five years. Yeah. Is some of that comes once you have these sizable audiences, right? Is there comes all that legacy baggage, right? So that's why the upstarts like Shopify and you know, they don't have that legacy code baggage. They they could just start fresh and they don't have to worry about um disrupting that core, right? And so that always goes through our minds. We have to be very sensitive and test into that. And so that's where we we have a huge testing mindset because, you know, there can be a half a million swing in just making one quick decision, right? Um, and there's <laughs> numerous companies that have done that poorly in the past as they kind of do a digital migration. Yeah. Uh, Jason, our, our, our global head of SEO, um, puts in a comment that it's a it's a smart, great move with medical related content getting an authority figure to vet the content. Yeah, loves these EAT. 
expertise, yeah. authority, trustworthiness. Yeah. I mean, you guys have like the Google, the Google playbook. Yes. I mean, we have a, we have a team that has been building up um, over the last two years that we've heavily invested in SEO. Um, we have a team of six now um, individuals that kind of focus on that because again, um, you have to kind of play by their rules. Yeah. But with that, we, we are now thinking of more of keeping that, um, but also thinking about, okay, how do we own the data, right? So we're talking about that's where the data lake is important for us is how do we take the information that we're learning and gaining from Google, Facebook, e-commerce, and the direct mail side, how do we put that all together to see that unified picture? Um, and, and that's our focus for this year. Awesome. Uh, so I know we're running a little late on time. I, I, I got to ask this question from Andrew because he will be, uh, unhappy with me if I don't. So I know he loves the Reader's Digest jokes. Um, so he asks, what is the history of the Reader's Digest UGC joke initiative? And are there plans to evolve and grow that content area? Yeah, it's always been, um, our joke books have always sold um, strong. Um, it's been a core part of the magazine. I think um, whenever you tell someone about that works for Reader's Digest, that's the first thing that people always gravitate towards. Um, the UGC was, it was always inherent of the magazine. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, it's one of those things that we haven't figured out the, the right tip for expanding further on digital because not many advertisers want to be on digital pages on the content and the, and the engagement level is a little bit lower there. Um, yeah. We've, we've been trying to crack it with even subscribing to the magazine and connecting that um, we failed with some tests, but I think we'll have some more tests um, kind of in the end of our fiscal quarter. Cool. Awesome. <laughs> Michael, it's been, uh, yeah. it's been really fun to learn about, you and your business. Um, I will tell you, Overdose is really excited to be working with you guys and we're having a lot of fun. And I think we've got a lot of awesome uh, partnership ahead. So uh, thank you. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Gary. Appreciate right. that. Bye-bye.